start off with the statement introducing this segment of a board meeting. The board encourages comments about the district from members of the public. Anyone who has signed up to speak in advance of the meeting in accordance with the board's procedures may do so at this time. So we started the meeting. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to district business and be no longer than three minutes. For any member of the public who is accompanied by a translator, your time will be doubled as required by law. Remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. In addition, the board has adopted policies to provide prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns for employees, students, or their parents, and the general public. Copies of our district policies and procedures on public comment and filing complaints are available on the New Deal ISD website. I'm Stacy Donini. I have been a third grade teacher here at New Deal for 12 years. First, I want to apologize to the families and teachers of New Deal for not showing up at school board meetings before April. I'm fixing that, and I will make every effort to be here. The resignation of Jeff Quisenberry has been just one more blow in the series of blows to all of us at New Deal. At what point will enough be enough for all of you? Is being in control so important you are willing to continue to lose excellent educators, people who truly love kids and truly love to teach? As the great, uh, has the great Jimmy Nolan gotten you all so quickly you can't think for yourselves? What does, what does he have on you that makes you so afraid to tell him no? What promises has he made you? Are the desires of certain families more important than the desires of this whole community? We are a Title I district. The misappropriation of funds is criminal. Many of our students live in poverty, and when I see how you have designated monies in our budget, including the ESSER funds, I'm appalled. Our students deserve better, way better than what they're getting. I've heard that we have hurt your feelings. Look around this room. We have made it perfectly clear how we feel. We are disappointed, frustrated, disgusted, and angry and you absolutely refuse to listen to us. Are you gonna sacri keep sacrificing the teachers and students of New Deal because you will not confess your mistakes and do what it takes to rectify them? Are you that arrogant and prideful? We've asked you all to resign and to let us elect people who truly want to fix the mess that you have made of our precious district. It's time for you to let go and let others lead, something you have failed to do so far. Yes, there are other factors in my decision, but 
working for it. They were not speaking about Mrs. Cooper. I have known her for over 20 years, and I was sure that I wanted to work for her. She has been nothing but supportive and encouraging over the last three years. This person was warning me about the administration above her. I decided to give this higher administration the benefit of the doubt. I thought I had made the right decision until this year. The board has allowed the misappropriation of funds for numerous years. In the three years that I have been here, you have paid an administrative assistant for less than half time, 69,000 plus his fees, TRS fees for rehiring, a retiree of $29,748. That is $98,748 in three years that could have gone to hiring three new teachers. I could not even pick this administrative, administrative assistant out of a crowd because I've never met him. He's never been introduced at a staff meeting or a training that I have been required to go to. What exactly are his job duties? <laughs> Mr. Reed, you have allowed this consent to continue for three years. It's also concerning to me the conduct of school board members towards teachers. If you as a school board member have a student enrolled in the district, you should treat their teachers with respect. You should treat them as professionals. You should not have to say, I'm coming to you as a parent, not as a school board member. That already is a threatening statement. You should not go straight to the principal. If you have an issue with something going on in the classroom, call the teacher first. If it is not resolved, then you go to the principal. Yes. The teacher should not feel attacked when they have a conversation with you. You should know the facts, or at least ask the teacher about the facts before you begin assuming what goes on in the classroom. I do not mind talking to parent, to any parent, but I expect to be treated with respect. This is a great factor in the reason I am leaving this district. I will not be treated in this manner by anyone. You may be asking why I never reported these conversations. It's simple. This year I have seen what happens when you speak up against those in power. All of the information that has come to light in the last few months is extremely disappointing. It's even more concerning that you are not listening to what the school staff and the community are asking of you. If you can't make decisions or create an environment that is best for kids, you need to step down and allow someone who has the heart for kids to do the job that you were elected, appointed, or hired to do. So because of that little oversight, I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and provide you with each and every contract for Jimmy Nolan for the years of 20, 2010 through 2024. Along with that, I've provided copies of school board meeting minutes so you can see who is in attendance at those meetings, a contract analysis so that you can see just how much this board has agreed to pay its superintendents, plural, and I've also included a recommended action plan for the board's consideration. It's going to take a lot to try and mend the betrayal of this community's trust, but this actual plan right here is probably a good place to start. So if you'll actually take the time to review these contracts, take a look at those numbers at the bottom of the contract analysis, I think you'll have a hard time justifying just how much one man was paid. But if you don't have a hard time with that, and if you continue to move forward, ask if the community is not literally sitting in front of you telling you exactly what they want, I can guarantee with the utmost certainty that this community will be moving forward with steps to remove every single one of you. You guys will not be able to hide behind a shiny new school, and what has happened up to this point is unacceptable, and that's not the first time that you've been told this. Listen, we've all heard you say that it's in your board policy that the only response you have to choose from is a statement of factual information or reciting existing board policy, but according to the same TASB Open Meetings Act document that you referred to in the first meeting, in which I've provided each one of you a copy of, the board can respond with, the board will add your request to the agenda of the next board meeting, or you're even allowed to say, does any board member have any objections to placing this item for deliberation on the agenda for the next meeting? Now, if you guys genuinely didn't know that, now you do. 
But Mr. Reed wants everybody in the public to follow the district's grievance policy so that basically it won't have to be addressed publicly and therefore the spread of misinformation can still continue. So the people of this district have addressed you all publicly with their concerns. I think it's about time to respond publicly back. Start adding these people's concerns to your agenda. They're not gonna go away just because you think all of this will die down. Now with all of the information presented to you tonight, not one of you at this table can say that you did not know why all of this is happening. You've got it all right there in front of you. So take a good look, bust out your calculators, do your due diligence, and what's your excuse? Because your signature's on every single one of those. coach and assistant principal of the elementary. You might remember a little old email that I sent back in November explaining my concerns about Mr. Reed. Well, now it makes sense why none of you did a thing. In fact, you never even replied. You, the board, were the only ones that I could go to according to the chain of command. Instead, you allowed Mr. Reed to take care of the grievance that was against him. Mr. Reed immediately shut my email down, placed me on administrative leave, for no reason, forced me to withdraw my children with no warning, tried to trash my reputation, spread lies about my departure, and set out to make an example of me to show others what happens when they don't agree with you. And my personal favorite, trying to ban my now infamous space buns. Sadly, even this very day attempts are being made to intimidate and threaten those that were closest to me while I was here and to those who still associate with me now. Here's what bothers you. You underestimated my ability to form genuine, authentic relationships with people. Not just teachers, but with kids, with parents, community members. I got in the trenches with the elementary teachers. I fought for change with them. Unlike you, I show respect, I show dignity, and you know what in return? They're giving it back to me. Now, you're upset because they're showing up to board meetings that they never even knew they could come to. You become defensive when they ask you questions. Your favorite excuse with that condescending shoulder shrug is, can't do anything, it's not my decision. Or like this year, before the TikToks forced you into action, that's just how it's gonna be. You see, true leaders create more leaders, not followers, not minions who do your bidding, not people that collect exorbitant paychecks for little or no work. Actual leaders are here to make decisions for kids. That's why your elementary teachers are here. In case you forgot, that is what your job is, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're not here for kids, you need to go. Or in the case of Brad Proctor, when you use your board status to bully teachers into getting what you want for your children only, you have no business making decisions for children. Mr. Reed, it's crystal clear that Mr. Nolan and this board bought and paid for your complacency years ago. Unfortunately, things have become so inbred and dysfunctional at the top that now all your secrets are spilling out from the rug you swept them under. Retaliation and paranoia, it looks bad on you, Mr. Reed. It doesn't quite fit with your innocent, do-good Christian persona. And by the way, a new building does not replace poor leadership. Now that you know better, do better. extensive experience managing multi-million dollar budgets and supervising staff. I hold a master's degree in agricultural education with an emphasis on leadership studies and am also certified to teach in four disciplinaries. I tell you all of that so that you will understand. I have a 30-year career in education. 
based upon the information that has come out via social media, I decided to apply my professional expertise to examine information for myself. Based on TEA district financial reports for 2017 to 2018, $298,268 was an increase in revenue over the prior year. However, that does follow two years of revenue losses. The ending fund, ending fund balance for that year was $108,470. And yet, a $100,000 bonus, as per the contract, was paid to a single individual. 2018 to 2019, $2.35 million increase in revenue, $107,000 decrease in payroll expenditures. The ending fund balance of $1,081,038 is due in large part to the increased tax revenue generated by business increases in the district. 2019 to 2020, $2.14 million increase in revenue, $295,766 increase in payroll expenditures, most of that due to the state minimum salary schedule increase as required. The ending fund balance, $2.5 million. All signs are that increased businesses are a significant positive contribution to our ending fund balance. However, there are glaring management issues relative to salary and stipend structures. An informal salary study utilizing information provided by NDISD for 2021 to 2022 shows that 10 of 21 elementary teachers have less than five years with NDISD, indicating both an attraction and retention issue. Stipend structure is messy and inequitable. There are no stipends for additional professional education, certifications, and degrees, which is standard in most K-12 districts and higher education institutions. This indicates there is no value to additional professional training and education, which is a shame. 21 elementary teachers are sharing $42,680 in stipends. 13 high school teachers are sharing $80,440 in stipends. 15 coaches are sharing $242,364 in stipends. Five coaches do not teach an academic class, two or eight. Two coaches teach one class. Eight coaches have three to four classes. Conversely, you have multiple teachers teaching more classes than there are class periods in the day. It's quite clear that stipends and extra duty pay are awarded haphazardly and perhaps not in proportion to the actual expectations of the job. If duties require work into the summer months, then 11 and 12 month contracts should be awarded with attendance and duty expectations outlined and subsequently formally evaluated. Additional teaching positions should be created in those areas where teachers have more classes than the day allows and stop creating additional coaching positions that do not have teaching responsibilities. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Utilizing TEA reports for 12 schools of regional proximity and or in UIL District 2A. These are districts with whom we compete for qualified professionals. New Deal is one of four that start at state minimum and are among the lowest paying districts. Ilu, Olden, and Abernathy being the other three. Hale Center, Sundown, and Petersburg pay 11 to 15 percent over state minimum. Smire, beginning, and experienced teachers start at 15.5 percent over the state minimum. The superintendent role at New Deal ISD is fourth highest paid of that same sample population, based strictly on salary. That does not include additional benefits received that the normal teacher does not receive such as up to five paid leave days, health insurance coverage for him and his family up to $17,500, and an amount equal to the superintendent's portion of the monthly contribution to TRS required for the superintendent. A primary tenet of strong and healthy organizational management is that your entire staff, from top to bottom, be rewarded equitably. The disparity between your top administrative role and your teachers in particular elementary, is alarming. If the superintendent is going to be among the top paid when benchmarked against others, it is an important role. It should be well rewarded. But your teachers should be as well. Right. Additionally, if you pay more competitively and advertised appropriately, you might find you have a larger pool of actually certified and experienced teachers applying for these positions. The NDISD motto is college ready, career ready, life ready. 
However, you continue to decrease the expenditures per student for career and technical training and increase expenditures for athletics-related activities to the point where you spend $177 more per student on athletics. Every decision made regarding personnel management and budget management reflects on the administration and the school board and ultimately affects the quality of the education provided to our students. I do not find evidence of decision making that promotes a healthy and positive educational environment for our students and teachers. The district is operating in the black and collecting a significant increase in taxes, thanks largely to the added businesses within the district. As development continues, the revenue stream should increase. Where will you continue to budget this increase? Will you invest in attracting and retaining top qualified and certified talent? Will you invest in truly preparing our students to be college ready, career ready, and life ready? Or will you continue to offer rock bottom salaries and inequitable and or unearned stipends, create unnecessary roles and positions, and reduce funding in critical need areas? Where you put your money will show your priorities. And if you wish to claim you prepare students to be college ready, career ready, and life ready, then put our money where it will benefit our students the most as an investment in quality experience and certified teaching talent and programming that prepares them for life beyond New Deal ISD. Because of the bad choices that you have made over the last 12 years, 
you can no longer be an effective school board member or president for our district. It would be in the best interest of our students and our community for there to be a new president of the school board effective immediately and for you to resign. Amen. To the remaining board members, your voices counted, yet not one of you used your voice to disagree with the ludicrous contracts for Mr. Nolan. Therefore, you two were complicit in mishandling our tax dollars and misappropriating educational funds to be used for the benefit of one man instead of the children that you should have been representing. It is time to allow new community members and parents the opportunity to run for a seat on this school board and to allow our community to vote for who to vote for and determine who runs the school district. The current school board who aided in getting into getting us into this predicament should not be permitted to make another appointment for a vacated seat. Trust has been lost. If you look not only around this room, but at this community, there are a number of highly qualified individuals who demand the opportunity to run in a school board election. I being one of them. A former teacher would make a great addition to this school board. Thank you. And I look forward to the future of New Deal ISD under new leadership. Paying citizen, it's right there in front of you. I want the sign gone. And I'm calling for each and every one of you's resignation. All of you had a part in this nonsense. You're stealing from me, you're stealing from everybody here, and you're giving it to one person. These teachers are suffering, and my children are suffering, and all these other people's children are suffering. If your signature's on any of those contracts, you're to blame. You don't stir the hornet's nest, and you ain't gonna be able to sweep it away. I'm gonna be up in every one of y'all's faces. I'm pissed. And I expect some action, and I expect Jimmy Nolan's resignation soon. He's getting paid to do nothing while my children are suffering. That's all. That's right. 